buy the sub mini now. Now I've been bursting to tell you guys this. So I've actually gotten the sub mini way before this video is being released. Thanks to my friends at Taktron Acoustic, which is the official distributor for Sonos in Singapore, Malaysia and Hong Kong. And while I've made several videos to preview the sub mini, I could not make a video to talk about how the Sub Mini sounds like before the review embargo lifts. And trust me, it was actually so much harder to hold this information and wait for the opportunity to tell you guys than the actual wait for the Sonos Sub Mini itself. Now, the upfront summary for this video is really quite simple. I don't even have to caveat things too much. It is a solid buy recommendation. I paired the Sonos Sub Mini with the Beam, the Arc, the Play 1s, the Play 3s, the 5s, the M, the Ikea Symphonics, Bookshelf, Lamp, Picture Frames, and in every single instance, everything that is paired to sounded better. Now, if you were sharp enough, you will have caught that I did not manage to test it together with the Sonos Ray because I had the review unit returned to Sonos already. But I'm pretty sure the story will be the same for that SOS with every other Sonos device that came before this. Now, the Sonos Sub Mini is available in two colors, right? Matte black and matte white, which is the color that I have here. Now, this is as opposed to the piano gloss finishing of the Sonos Subs before this. It looks in line with the rest of the Sonos lineup. In fact, the Sonos Sub Gen 1, 2 and 3 are the, probably the only Sonos devices to ever have a gloss finish in recent memory. Now, everything from the port to the amp to the soundbars and the speakers that Sonos has made, they are all in matte finishing. Now, personally, I do like gloss finishing, but some of you might find it as a little bit too old-fashioned and not modern looking enough. But I also like having a cohesive look across all my speakers and devices even more. Now, the Sub Mini itself doesn't come with much, right? There's good, solid cardboard packaging, which is environmentally friendly and uh, very strong, very protective. Not a single shred of plastic inside. Now, in the box, there are some papers and a power cable. So, the Sub itself is of a pretty plain design, at which um, I think this is the back of the Sub. There is a connect button right here, all right? And I didn't even use this connect button like uh, most other Sonos speakers. I didn't even have to touch the button at all. In fact, when I was pairing the sub to all the different speakers that I have, uh, it was done automatically started when I started this sub up. And it was detected by the Sonos S2 app itself and completed by sharing the pin wirelessly through the phone um, and having the network Wi-Fi credentials pass through NFC by tapping the phone on top of the sub mini where the NFC antenna is embedded. Now, at the bottom, there is a recessed power outlet, which is right here. And there's an Ethernet jack. I don't have much to talk about the recessed power outlet, but there's a power cable that comes supplied. It is really nicely coiled up. And upon uncoiling, there are no kinks in the power cord at all, allowing you to run nicely along the floor without risk of anyone tripping over them. Now, the Ethernet port itself, it functions like any other Sono speakers. If you run an Ethernet cable from this to your router, it sets up the Sonos Net and all your other Sonos devices will then tap on this particular network, freeing up all your Wi-Fi network and enhancing the stability of the wireless connection. Now, you may notice that there are no cable recesses for you to run the power cable through, but there are four color match silicon feet which will seat your sub nicely to prevent vibrations from being sent through to the floor. And there are these same um, silicon feet will raise the subwoofer enough for the power cable to run out in any direction from underneath the subwoofer. Now, in the cylindrical form factor, there is a port that runs through the cylinder. So this is it, all right? And this is as opposed to some other subwoofers where the cones are facing outwards. There is a very little risk of damage to these cones. And well, unless there are kids throwing coins in thinking that this is a slot machine. But kids probably won't know what a slot machine is. Well, these cones are going to be pretty well protected. Now, other than that, the exterior of the subwoofer is pretty unremarkable. And if you stack it into a corner, it won't be drawing much attention to itself.
Now, before I go into the details of how I arrive at this solid buy recommendation, let me talk a little bit about subwoofers. And what a subwoofer does is to produce bass. Bass is produced by moving a lot of air. So as far as subwoofer designs go, the bigger the subwoofer cone, the more air it moves, the more bass it produces. So most subwoofer comes in at about 10 or 12 inches in diameter. There are, of course, bigger monstrous subs that go 15, 18, or even a crazy ones at 21 inches. There are, of course, smaller subwoofers, but those will usually come in at about 8 inches. There are micro subs as well, clocking in about 6 inch subs. Now, some of them are using passive radiators to help enhance the bass output. The sub mini comes with 6 inch cones, but there are two of them. Just like the sub gen 1, 2, and 3 before them, they are also powered individually by two discrete amplifiers. And both are active, not one active and one passive. So, in terms of the active cone surface area, two times six inch cones actually clock in at a surface area of 56.5 square inches. Now, in comparison, an eight inch sub woofer cone will clock in at 50.3 square inches. So the Sub Mini here actually has more active cone surface area than a single 8-inch Sub. And not to mention that a bigger cone requires more powerful application to move the cones, as well as to stop the cones. Now, why do you need to stop the cone? Well, so that you don't get flabby base. Base needs to be tight, thus stopping the cone with control power, otherwise known as damping factor, needs to be provided by a decent amplifier. The Sonos Sub Mini also has the drivers laid out in a horizontally opposed layout, right? So when a bass load is played, they're both moving inwards at the same time and outwards together in a similar fashion. Now this helps to cancel out the cabinet vibration and thus it enhances the bass and makes it tighter and more accurate rather than having the cabinet vibration also producing sound on its own that will ultimately smear the bass. And finally, subwoofers and speakers in general, they are classified into two types of design, ported and sealed. The sub gen 1, 2, and 3, they're all ported sub designs. Now, this is the first sub that Sonos has made that is of a sealed design. There are no air ducts inside. Ported subs are generally more suitable for movies and content with high audio dynamic range, like your gunshots and your explosions. Now, sealed subs deliver a smoother bass response, which is more suitable for music. Now, there are other design considerations, of course, when it comes to ported and sealed subs, but I won't have time to cover all of them today. All you have to know is that the Sub Mini has no ports at all at the top and the bottom of the acoustic slot, unlike the subs before this. Now, at the end of the day, adding a subwoofer to any setup frees up the amplification power and the drivers to allow them to focus on the mid-range and the treble, thus uh, improving the response in those ranges. Now, just pass all the bass duties to the subwoofer and everything else that you pair it with will sound better. Okay, so now we've gotten the Sub Mini physical introduction and the Sub Design principles out of the way. Let me get into why you should be getting the subwoofer. So, who should be buying this Sub Mini? I'm going to simplify things a little and start by splitting buyers into two groups. The ones without a subwoofer today and the ones with a Sub Gen 1 or 2 or 3 today. Now, that might be generalizing things a little bit too much, so I'm going to split these two groups into another two subgroups. The group that listens to music more and the group that are more into home theatre. Now, as the sub is a slave device and won't be able to play anything on its own, the assumption is that anyone considering this would already have a Sonos device or is buying one together with a sub mini for the first time. Now, the first group, those without a sub and are more of music listeners. You are definitely going to be getting more out of a sealed subwoofer. And if the Sub Gen 3 wasn't pairing that well with whatever you're listening to music with uh, because it's a ported design and because it's pumping out too much bass, then this is your key. The Sub Mini puts out less throbbing bass and there's definitely less thump, but the bass response is smoother, which lends itself well to music. So this group, buy it. Now, unless you're already using the Sonos 5s, which on its own already puts out an insane amount of bass. Now, the second group, right, those without a sub, 
but are more into movie watching, right? Then my question is, why aren't you already using a sub? Well, possibly because the sub Gen 3 might rock your neighbours and you're just trying to be nice, or that the sub Gen 3 is simply too expensive. Now, with the launch of the Sonos Ray, a $799 sub does sound like a silly addition to the $279 budget soundbar. But the sub mini is coming in at $429 at almost half the price. This doesn't sound that bad. So, if price was stopping you before, this should convince you based on the pricing alone. Now, even if you move it up a notch to the Sonos Beam Gen 2, it still stacks up quite nicely in terms of pricing, with the Beam Gen 2 costing $449, right about the same price as the Sub Mini. Then the real question then is, if you are using the $899 Sonos Arc soundbar, then would this Sub Mini be underwhelming? Well, I can't get into every single combination in one video today, but the short answer to that is no, I pair them up. Yes, there's less bass than the Sub Gen 3, but still incredibly smooth extension to the bass you're getting out of the Sub Mini. Now, I'm going to have to lump Group 3 and 4 together. Those with a Sub Gen 1, 2, 3 already, regardless of whether you're listening primarily to music or watching movies. Now, this is pretty simple you don't need the Sub Mini. Well, you want the Sub Mini, I know that, but you don't need it. Now, I did a survey where there were more than 1,300 responses. And I realised that 23% of those who already own a Sub will be getting the Sub Mini anyway. Now, I don't blame you and I'm not judging you because I made that 23%. Why? Because the sub sounds different. Because there is a difference in the power delivery. I'm ignoring the bug where TruePlay reduced the sub output in version 14.12 through to 14.16 because that will be resolved in due time. Anyway, I'm testing without TruePlay turned on. Now, the sub Gen 3 output is punchy and there's some serious rumble that the sub is capable of putting out. But there's simply too much of it in some scenario. The sub mini lends a much smoother bass response, although there's overall less bass, but the integration is superb. I can almost feel the sub mini disappearing in the setup, and it becomes incredibly hard to localize where the sub is. It almost feels like the bass is coming from the speaker or the soundbar itself. Now, what if you are listening to music and watching movies equally, 50-50? So, should you buy? Yeah. Should you buy the Sub Mini or the Sub Gen 3? Sub Mini. It is more of a well-rounder. The Sub Gen 3 is a hard hitter. No one has ever complained that the Sub Gen 3 had insufficient bass. In fact, it was possibly even too much of a rumble. If you have ever watched any of my videos for the best arc or beam settings, you might have noticed that I've always recommended turning out the bass output for a more balanced bass response. But your taste might differ and I am respectful of that. We are all different humans with different preferences. Now, if you're a Sonos freak like me, then okay, simple. You know you want to get it anyway. Why did you even stay so long into this video? Just pre-order it now. So, good news for those of you who are in Singapore. I have prepared for another live selling session with TC Acoustic where there will be promo code that will be released during the live stream itself. This will take place at 10 a.m. Sunday, 2nd of October. So do mark that date down and if you are keen, remember to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified when that happens. Now, at this point in time, I'm pretty sure I've run quite long into this video. I thank you for your patience and no review video of mine will be complete without a frequency response chart. So this will be the first time that you're going to be seeing the frequency response of the Sonos Sub Mini. Now, Sonos advertised the Sonos Sub Mini to reach 25 hertz. And that is the same output as the Sonos Sub Gen 3 at 25 hertz as well. Now, from subjective listening, I can't tell if it is at 25 hertz. So, we just have to deploy a specialized calibrated mic and REW software to measure the frequency response of the Sonos Sub Mini. Will it put out the same amount of bass as the Sub Gen 3? So, for this test, I have paired the Sub Mini with the Sonos Arc. So, this is probably the highest level of performance from the range of soundbars that Sonos makes. Why the arc? Because 
that's my primary setup and where the testing is being done. In the future videos, I'll test it out with other soundbars. But meanwhile, here goes. So this green line here that I'm popping up on the screen right now, it represents the Sonos Arc on its own without a subwoofer. Now, as you can see, there is a big drop off in bass from about 110 hertz or so downwards. Now, of course, you can still hear things down to about 50 or 60 hertz, but you, you know you aren't getting enough bass. Now, the next line, the yellow line that I've pulled out now, this is for the Sonos Arc when it's paired with the Sonos Sub Gen 3. Now, we're all quite familiar with this now. So, yes, the bass is enhanced measurably from 110 hertz downwards. In fact, it will prop it up so high as to make the rest of the curve look a little bit anemic. Now, there's a lot of bass, maybe even to the point of imbalance, which is why I always recommending dropping sub output by a couple of notches to get a more even bass response. So this difference is what you are paying $799 for. Now, the moment of truth, red line, representing the Sonos Sub Mini, right? So as you can see, the bass output is not quite as strong as the Sub Gen 3. Now, this is to be expected. Listening to it, you'll feel that it is actually a more balanced bass and you probably won't have to adjust the sub-output uh, slider by too much in order to tame it. Now, how much bass there is, is actually hard to quantify in words. But if you look at the curves, it is actually closer to the yellow curve of the Sub-Gen 3 than to the green curve of the Sonos Arc on its own. So if you think about paying just about half that of the Sub-Gen 3, but getting 75, 80% of the bass output, then you are quite about right. So not that the additional bass from the Sub-Gen 3, at least in my particular case, uh, is useful. I still have to tame it down a notch or two. So if I were to be able to save some money without having to pay for the power that I'll never use, then i say that's a solid win for the Sonos Sub Mini. So there you have it, the absolute truth of performance of the Sonos Sub Mini. I'll say this again, to my ears, they are right about the correct levels of bass. In fact, it is actually a smoother and slightly flatter response curve than the Sonos Sub Gen 3 when it's paired to the Arc. Now, while there may be other variables when it comes to the other soundbars and speakers, I would say that this is probably a very good indication of the performance of the Sonos Sub Mini relative to the Sub Gen 3. Now, note that these tests were all done without true play. Now, some of you might be asking, why am I not engaging true play? Well, that's because not everybody has true play, and true play will take into consideration your room tone and the interactions. So I test the speakers and subs in their raw original configuration, and that is probably how some of us will uh, like it. So now you know in depth about the performance of the Sono Sub Mini, and here are some of the other videos that you can expect over the coming weeks, maybe even months. I will be measuring the power draw of the Sono Sub Mini. I will be doing in-depth comparison between the Sono Sub Gen 2 and the Gen 3 versus the Sub Mini. I will probably even do a best placement video for the Sono Sub Mini where you should be placing the Sono Sub Mini. Um, maybe best setting for the Sonos Beam and the Sonos Arc when it's paired with the Sub Mini. All the different setups for the music and home theatres when paired with the Sub Mini. Now, if I would go through the entire list, it will probably be the Sonos 1 or the Play 1s, the Play 3s, the 5s, the Ms, the Ray, the Beam, the Arc, yeah, the IKEA Symphonics, Bookshelf, Lamp, Picture Frame, you get the idea. Anything else that is new coming from Sonos in the future, I will be probably pairing this guy up together with the Gen 3 to make a comparison. And I will probably want to do some demo recordings to illustrate the differences between the setup when it is paired with the Sonos Sub Gen 3 versus the Sonos Sub Mini. So you can hear the differences as well, right? On top of just looking at the frequency response curves. Now, I will usually also show you the frequency response charts anyway, so you can see the difference, not just hear it. You know what? In fact, why don't I just let you hear for yourself my first recording of the Sonos Sub Mini. You just have to hear for yourself how it stacks up. I've recorded two passages where you can compare the differences between the Sonos Sub Mini and the Sonos Sub Gen 3 when it's being paired with the Sonos Arc. The first recording will be the Sonos Arc with the Sub Gen 3, so you will likely hear more bass, especially the bass drop towards the end. And the second part of the recording will be the same video, but we will be of the Sonos Arc when it's paired with the Sonos Sub Mini. So let's go.
is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Soundscape sets the mood of the scene. Your vehicle on the side of the road. Whoa! What is this place? Whoa! Come on, you guys, let's go! Or captures the full extent. Do you want to know my secret? Of nature's fury. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Soundscape sets the mood of the scene. Your vehicle on the side of the road. Whoa! What is this place? Whoa! Come on, you guys, let's go! Or captures the full extent. Do you want to know my secret? Of nature's fury. So I hope you have found the recording useful in terms of getting a feel of how the Sonos Sub Mini stacks up to the Sonos Sub Gen 3. It is a best effort recording and nothing beats hearing it for yourself, but it should give you a pretty good sensing of uh, how the two stacks up. And it is all for today's video. I know it's been a long one, but it's something new from Sonos and I think it deserves the coverage. Now, if you need an extensive refresher of some of the secrets of the Sonos Sub Mini, do check out this video right here where I talk about the little unknown facts of the Sonos Sub Mini, which I've briefly touched on in this video. And I will see you over in that video.